So what days are we celebrating today, Kate? Today's days, Matt, are definitely different. <laughs> okay. National Greasy Foods Day. Oh, right. Okay. Opera Day. Oh. No Workplace Drama Day. Man. And National Chucky the Notorious Killer Doll Day. Ha! <laughs> About time he got his own day. Right. Yeah. Six days until Halloween, 12 Ooh. days left until Daylight Savings. Oh, wow. That's right. That is coming up in us. Yep. Actually, just over the weekend, I was like, ah, uh, the sun needs to be up. This is silly. <laughs> it is so dark in the morning. So I'm ready for that switch. You? I, uh, yes and no. Okay. It means that winter's coming. So I'm kind of like, hold off as long as we can. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just vastly prefer having the light in the morning, but, uh, I've said that before. I don't need to belabor the point. What about Greasy Foods Day? Are you going to celebrate? Well, I probably shouldn't have been really good lately, but maybe, you you know, some French fries always sound good. Yeah. Chicken fried steak. Oh, mashed potatoes and gravy. Gravy. Yum. Yeah. That'd do you right. But yeah, if you're on some kind of trend, if you're on some kind of diet or whatever, don't let, you know, the calendar force you to eat greasy food, Kate. The calendar made me do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You want to know how to extend the life of your pumpkin, Kate? Sure. First, they highly recommend going to the pumpkin patch as opposed to the grocery store or hardware store, for example. Okay. Any guesses as to why? Uh, They're fresher. Less likely to be damaged in transit is what this specifically says. Oh, okay. Okay. Which makes makes sense. sense. Clean your pumpkin before carving. Clean it before carving. Yeah. And say, just as with any fruit, yes, it's a fruit. Wipe the exterior clean before use and beware of dropping temperatures. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to freeze between now and Halloween, but if it were, or if you want to maintain it after Halloween and it looks like it's going to freeze, it'll start falling apart if it gets a freeze, which makes sense. You got to carve out the guts real good. Real good. Yep. I saw a video of a grandma showing you how to clean out the guts with her hand mixer. Oh, that's an interesting. Yeah, she put her, cut the top off and then put your hand mixer in and bloop, 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 bloop. It's all done. Hand mixer being like what you would use to make cookies, that kind of mixer Mm -hmm. or the blender kind. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, they mentioned the ice cream scoop. Yeah. But most importantly, that if there's any leftover guts, that will attract insects. Yeah. Which will then deteriorate your pumpkin some more. Soak it in bleach. Really? Yeah. It kills any bacteria that might be on there. And you, you would dilute it. They say one tablespoon of bleach per quart of water. Or you can spray if you can make a, a spray there. You can do that. Now, is that before you carve it? Several ways to preserve and protect your pumpkin once it's cut open. Okay. Soak so it yeah, in bleach. I guess you would use this after the fact. Okay. Spray would probably be easier than trying to find something to dunk your pumpkin into, but, you know. And then finally, (laughs) rub hot sauce on it. Because of the squirrels. You got it. Ah. How about that? There you go. We're going to be actually carving and painting pumpkins this weekend, Matt. Oh, I can't wait to see the results. Yes. At a Halloween party and everybody bring your own pumpkin and... Oh, I asked the girls, like, how do you guys feel about this? And Finley was like, uh, do we have to? I was like, how about painting? And she's like, yes, let's paint it. Doesn't like the idea of the guts? I don't think she likes the idea of, like, her having to wield a sharp object. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Maybe give it time and she'll become a knife enthusiast or something, Kate. Maybe. Maybe. Matt, I've got a good Halloween punny for you. Woo! Ha, 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 ha. Who did the scary ghost invite to his party? Who did the scary ghost invite to his party? I give up. Any old friend he could dig up. Oh, yeah. There's no way I would have gotten that one right. No, no, no. (laughs) But it was cute. Yeah. Go forth and spread that joke and tell your friends that you heard it on Matt and Kate. Right, Kate? Right. I got a good one tomorrow. Ooh, look at that. What a tease. The suspense. Mm -hmm. Also, Matt and Kate are a podcast. Go get us. Kate, it's difficult to secure Jeffrey Dahmer costumes for Halloween. Oh, I heard that some of them were pulling off their sites. Yep, it looks like it's going to be a DIY thing. Now, eBay said, hey, check us out. 
we've banned Jeffrey Dahmer costumes for years, which is an interesting place. I wouldn't think of to get a costume. No. So what are you going to do then? Well, I don't think Jeffrey Dahmer was in my top three anyways. Oh, no. So no. Okay. Well, do you have any ideas? No, I need to have something for Saturday night, though. No, I mean, do you have any ideas for how you would make a Jeffrey Dahmer costume? Uh, bad comb over, old glasses. Bad comb over. Mm hmm. Oh, I didn't remember a comb over. Yeah, he's got. Have you seen the show? No, I haven't. Okay. Recommended? Uh, no, I. The trailer gave me nightmares. So. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but he's got a bad comb over in the trailer. Okay. Didn't know that. Yeah. I was thinking maybe like you could have a cow heart or something. Ew. And like have a plate, a fork and knife on there. You walk a door to door trick or treat. That's very much committed to your props right there. I would think so. Yeah. I think he would. Didn't he eat a heart or something? I don't think that there's much he didn't eat. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Tastes like chicken. Yeah. So do you have anything on your short list for Halloween costumes? No, I don't. I started thinking about that this morning. I was like, what am I going to be? I got to have something easy and not a lot of accessories and something I can throw together and not have to go buy. Because you're doing, you're going to a Halloween or this is for the pumpkin carving event? Or? Yes, this is for our, we've kind of created a nice little tradition Halloween party with our family. So uh, we're having a Halloween party on Saturday night and we've gone big with games and food. And it's been like a really busy season for everyone in our family. So we're like, hey, how about pumpkin carving and painting and uh, maybe a couple of games, but we're not going too big. So you host this every year? My mom has. Oh, your mom has. Yeah. And she hosting it this year? Or you are? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. She no, she okay. is. But usually my mom hosts and my sister and my sister-in-law and I put it together. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're bringing some confectionaries with you? Yes, and props and decorations, props, okay. and we've got the like the games planned and all the prizes and all the food and yeah. Maybe you could just be a witch. It's not easy. You just get a witch hat. I think that is pretty easy. We're doing a trunk or treat thing on Friday night where we're doing a witch theme, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe I'm going to have to borrow, just wear all black and a witch's hat and call it good. Yep. I don't think people will call you out. I don't think so. Too simple. Too simple. That doesn't count. I'm like that. Yeah. I set a reminder for Monday to turn off my lights so that I don't disappoint any children who show up. You don't want to put a bowl out? No. No. Okay. I'm not either. We don't have kids in our neighborhood and we're not going to be there. So I'm not putting out. A bowl. My mom used to do that, and then one year, some kid took off with it. I shouldn't say kid. Who knows? It could have been an adult. Right. Just took the whole thing. Oh. One Halloween basket and all. I know. Poor mommy. Shoot. Another thing to... Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Another PSA from Matt and Kate. Don't, don't make people sad like that. I know. Especially if it's my mom. Especially if it's Mama Stooks. Get out of here. Matt, plastic surgeons have seen a 25% jump in requests for beard transplants oh God. because of Prince Harry. Go on. Right? Because yeah. what would you gather information from that? What, what would you, okay. what would that make you think? I guess the first thing that pops to mind is, was there a story about Prince Harry having a beard transplant? That's what I thought. So I was like, wait, what? Don't you think we would have heard about this? So I Googled, <laughs> did Prince Harry have a beard <laughs> transplant? And the answer is no. But because of all the pictures at his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth's funeral, and he looked so dapper with his beard, more men are oh going to get beard transplants because they want to look flawless like Harry. Now, if you're doing a beard transplant, it's not like they remove a beard from one dude and put it on the other. Correct. They pull the hair follicles from the back of one's head to put it on your cheeks and your chin. Yeah. Or where there's not hair. <laughs> and you want hair. It's not one of those deals where it's like, oh, man, he donated this beard to science. He should have donated right. it to the transplant system. Right. No. 
But I thought it was funny that it was like, because of Prince Harry, I'm going to go get my beard transplanted. You know, I was just talking over the weekend to somebody about how I've been impressed with how long beards have been popular. Mm -hmm. I feel like they should have gone out of phase by now, but I feel like beards have been a thing for like 20 years running, maybe. I don't know. I feel like maybe even longer. I feel like beards have come and gone. But the thing that I'm surprised to see on people our age and younger, mustaches. Yeah, mustaches. They're in. There's a guy, there's a dad at our school. He's got to be a young dad. He, I sw- he's got to be maybe 30. Maybe. And he is rocking this giant mustache. And he is a skinny man. It's like this mustache weighs more than his head. Like, it's just <laughs> part of me wants to ask him, like, are you in a bet right now? Like, <laughs> is this how you are choosing to greet people with that mustache on your face? Does he tr- have trouble walking straight? I don't whoa, think so. No, it is just it is an impressive beard on this young mustache. Yeah. Not beard. Did I say beard? Yeah, that time. Sorry. No, I, I forgive you. Okay, thanks. Walmart, Target, Best Buy are amongst the places not open on Thanksgiving, Kate. I saw that. Good for them. So where are you going to go? We're usually good on Thanksgiving. Do you mean like last minute, like, oh my gosh, we forgot sour cream? Or do you mean like shopping on Thanksgiving? No, I I meant shopping, shopping, shopping for presents for the holidays. We never do that on Thanksgiving. No, 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 no. Yep, so it kind of started trending down. I think there was a backlash before pandemic. Of, mm-hmm. you know, what are you making these poor retail employees have to go to work for? And mm-hmm. Yeah, we understand you want to escape your family and go shopping instead on Thanksgiving. <laughs> but during the pandemic, a lot of the places are like, hey, yep, sure, this is a good time to stop and staying strong with it. Yep. Best Buy points out that you could still ignore your family and shop online, though. Oh, good call, yeah. My word's not theirs, but... Mm-hmm. And you know, you like, you don't have to ignore your family. You can still be in the room with them while you're like online shopping. You don't think that's potentially ignoring them? I mean, they don't know it because you're there. You're present. You're scrolling your phone and figuring it out. Okay. Oh, okay. Did you know that Thanksgiving was called Brown Thursday? Did you know this? When? According to this article, eventually Thanksgiving became known as Brown Thursday. Because of all the shopping, you know, because there's Black Friday, Brown Thursday. This is the first time I'd heard of it, too. Okay. I thought maybe this was, you haven't heard of this before? No, and I don't like it. (laughs) Yeah, me neither. (laughs) Yeah. There's one particular thing I think of when I think of Brown Thursday. Right? That is not Uh, have anything uh, to do with shopping. uh -uh. Matt McRib is back. Really? Huh. McRib is back at McDonald's through November 20th. So if you're wanting McRib for Thanksgiving, you better grab <laughs> some now and freeze them. But yeah, McRib back at McDonald's and it was first introduced in 1981 and it has stuck around. <laughs> yeah. Initially introduced, I believe, as a full time offering and then found out it didn't work very well like that. And so they made it a limited deal. That way people for a month can just go binge on the McRib, I guess. Was McRib season a a big time when you were at McDonald's? I don't recall it being a huge seller. Okay. When I worked there. I do remember assembling the sandwich and being like, uh, uh, uh-uh. Not for me. Get one while you can because this is the McRib farewell tour, it says here, Kate, when I looked it up. Oh, really? Like last? Yeah, but I think maybe they're making fun of aging rock bands because they've done this before okay this is not the first time they've called this the mcrib farewell tour gotcha that's pretty funny mcrib well we'll see one around here at the station here pretty soon i have an idea on on who will bring it in you'll see one or you'll smell one i'll probably smell it coming good point Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you ever acted like james corden at a restaurant kate uh you need to be more specific berating the Staff? No. Had you not heard the story? Well, yes and no. Okay. The key point that stands out to me is that he lost it because there's some egg white in his wife's, what was supposed to be all yolk omelet. He yelled, you can't do your job, you can't do your job. 
according to a manager's report. Maybe I should go into the kitchen and cook the omelet myself. It's kind of surprising. doesn't seem like that type. No, but he, there's been lots of talk about him not being a nice person in real life. But I also heard on that story that there, he also was addressing a hair in their food. So I try really hard not to like go all crazy. I need to talk to the manager. Like we did have hair in our food one time and I very discreetly walked our plate back to the kitchen because our server was the only one on the floor and I knew she was really busy. And I just said, hey, yeah. can you do me a favor and can you take this back? And she's like, I'll bring you a new plate right away. I was like, okay, cool. And that was that. So, And so that gives him the right to then go ballistic if they just mess up his order? No, I was just saying that I heard that there was more than just like the egg whites. It was like hair in the food. Multiple things. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't imagine going off on the wait staff like that, regardless of if I was there previous time. And maybe I would just stay away from there mm-hmm. if I was disappointed that they got her in my food. Right. And I think it all came out because the restaurant manager was like, we're banning James Corden. <laughs> right. Right. And then James Corden talks to the manager and the manager is like, hey, we talked it out. Never mind. So I was like, okay, were you just trying to get publicity for your restaurant? <laughs> well, one of these, he said he wanted like comp drinks. Oh, wow. And my guess is he doesn't need his drinks comp, but right. Whatever. I don't understand that when people are like, you're going to comp these, right? Well, you make 19 figures. So can <laughs> you buy drinks for everyone in the house? Thanks. 19. Yeah. I went with it. I don't know if it's that many digits, but uh, yeah, he, he does well for himself. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of similar. I feel like to the Ellen deal where someone that a lot of people thought would seem like a really nice person and all kinds of stories come out saying, eh, a minute got some stories not so much i did catch some of the kelly clarkson show did i mention that to you no a weeks back and i was like on a friday afternoon i was out on the deck and i was like i'm gonna watch some tv and i started flipping around i said like, oh there's the kelly clarkson show and she had some breast cancer survivors on mm-hmm. and you know tears started flowing and kelly was like she's oh you've come to the right show girl look at all these kleenexes and she just had a, an abundance of kleenexes mm. And then eventually she went to commercial break. She's like, I'll be right back after I eat this cupcake. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Kelly. Oh, Kelly. I doubt you are secretly mean. I doubt it. I bet you Likely. she's nice. Super yep. nice. Matt, we've talked about the Florida man, but let's talk about the Florida middle schooler. The Florida middle schooler. <laughs> okay. All right. Getting started young. Yes. A Florida middle schooler stole $10,000 from their grandparents. And just started handing them out at school, handing out cash at school. How much money? $10,000. Wow. See, that's why you don't store your cash in your mattress, right? Right. I would think so. Don't do that. I mean, that's a lot of cash at home. So the middle schooler took the money to school and started handing out money. And then the school had to send an email. Uh, Upon investigation, we uncovered that the student had taken $10,000 from their grandparents and passed it out amongst their peers. Parents, we need your help. The school is hoping to return the money to the grandparents and is asking anyone that might have received the money to return it to the school resource officer. Ah. Is that like a middle school response when you say finders keepers? (laughs) Yeah, I would say so. (laughs) Sorry, too late. No backsies. That's a good no backsies situation. Right. I thought so. My aunt told me that she was getting 10 to 12 Medicare spam calls a day. Oh, my gosh. And apparently her email's a disaster also. And she's like, my email I can change. I don't have that many. She's retired now. She's like, I don't have that many yeah. business contacts I need to worry about. But the phone number, and I was like, okay. And first, I was going to say, I think a lot of cell phone providers will happily charge you like, I don't know, five bucks a month or something to give you enhanced spam call protection. Oh. And then I was like, well, let me actually poke around on the phone a little bit. And I found that, yes, you can just automatically send unknown phone numbers to your voicemail. Oh. And I thought that might be a nice tip for the Matt and Kate listener. I agree. Is that something that you would enable or no? Mm, It's yes and no. Like, Right off the cuff, I'm like, yes, absolutely. But then sometimes when we get reminders for the girls' doctor's appointments, it comes up unknown. So it's like, okay, mm, do I answer this or not? 
So he would send it to your voicemail still, so you'd still have... So you'd you know, still get the message. That's good. If they were to leave it. Yeah. So anyway, since she was looking for that fix, and especially, man, if you're getting 10 to 12 calls a day... That's nuts. My guess is you'd probably consider it a little bit more, but and she also claimed that she made a mistake by clicking on things in her email, which, yep, I need to give her one of those shirts that says emails in all caps. That's right. Probably. Bad news for wine lovers, Matt. Womp womp. Womp womp. What's going on? Uh, we could be headed for a big wine shortage. Yikes. Do you want to know why? Well, I had just read the other day that wine had really, there was like a big boom for wine. So is that it? People just drink too much of it? And now there's not that much left? Nope. Some kind of global warming thing? It's the vampire-like spotted lanternfly. Ooh. Right? I want to suck your wine. I don't know. Right? Yeah. Okay, it's eating its way through vineyards, leaving no fruit behind. And some makers are reporting the loss as much as 15% of their crops, which is like translating into tens of thousands of bottles. Yikes. That's a lot. So you're going to go hoard some wine now or no? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'll hoard some wine. Back up Monty's truck and just... Load them up. Fill it full of soda boxes. Go, 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 go. Load it up. Why are you peeling uh, out, leaving the liquor store? I don't know. It just seemed to know. work in context there. Seemed like a good idea at the time. It did. It did. In retrospect, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? N- nothing. Yeah. So be aware for, you know, if you're looking for your favorite bottle, maybe they're the ones affected by the vampire-like spotted lantern fly. Can't speak to it being an issue from our local vineyards here, right? Right. N- no word on that, but that sounds like something that crack newsman Brent Martin could look into. <laughs> we just give him assignments. That I'll email him. Is not my job. Yeah. New record pumpkin, Kate. New <laughs> record pumpkin. Yep. Okay. You want to guess how many pounds? 2,400. Wow, that's incredibly close. 2,560. Ugh. Yep. Dang. Where was it grown? Minnesota. Oh, I was expecting California. I don't know why, but Minnesota. Hmm. Well, California knows how to party. They know how to grow them in Minnesota. And pumpkin. So previously, this dude in New York had the record, 2,554 pounds. So just by six pounds. Wow. This dude won. I wonder if they check it for weights or anything. Sorry, we got to bust this thing open, make sure you didn't put any uh, fishing weights in here Something like that. I mean, but what do they do with the pumpkins after it's like that big? I don't know. Wasn't there someone that went down the Missouri River in a hollowed out pumpkin or something? Right. Was that right. what it was? Pumpkin? Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe that? You make boats? Maybe that. Yeah, because I don't know if they're that big. Do they make for good pumpkin pie or pumpkin seeds? Or is there something about them being large that doesn't make them as delectable. I don't know. Right? That's what I was thinking. Once they were that big, they can't be good. I I wouldn't think so. That's my inclination, but I don't know. Oh, so that's a U.S. record. I should clear up. That's okay. 2,560 pounds is a U.S. record. The world record is a 2,702 pumpkin that was picked a year ago in Italy. Italy? Hmm. Yeah. Wine and pumpkin country. Right? Right. Okay. I don't know that we've always put the two together. <laughs> yeah, they sound quite complimentary. Hmm. Pumpkin pie Italy. Well, maybe. Mm. Wine and pumpkins. Pumpkin pie with uh, some wine on the side? It's probably good. No? I'll let you try and decide. Okay. Mm-hmm. Only the opportunity to drink. Right. The oldest pumpkin seeds discovered were in Mexico and thought to be from the year 7000 BC. Wow. It's a lot. Remember the story about how they just had the one pumpkin and Christ divided it and 500 people could have some? Do you remember that one? I don't recall that one. Oh, okay. Oh. Hmm. Maybe I made that up. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's a possibility. Yeah. And this is the second article today that makes a point to say that pumpkin is a fruit. Yeah, because so. of the seeds, right? Isn't that what makes it a fruit? It has seeds? Right, right. So like my whole life thinking cucumbers were vegetables? Nope. Fruit. They're a fruit because they are the seed-producing part of a flowering plant. That's the way they spell it out here. Aha. Uh-huh. We learned so much here on Matt and Kate. 
Matt, how about a quiz? Oh, okay. Do, 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 yes. do, do, yeah. Okay, so less than a week away from Halloween. Woo-hoo. I'm going to quiz you on weird Halloween candy ingredients. Okay. And I'm going to be really honest with you. I've looked at this quiz. I've only heard of like maybe three of these things. <laughs> three of the ingredients? Three of the multiple choice answers. Okay. Through this quiz. Okay. All right. Well, I'm here for it. Let's do it. Yep. Blank is an ingredient in candy bars as well as lighter fluid. Is it butane, nicotine, or TBHQ? (laughs) I don't know what TBHQ is. I'll say butane. Right. That's what I would have guessed, but it's TBHQ. So in your lighter fluid, in your Snickers bar. Yum. So THBQ is lighter fluid? TBHQ. TBHQ? Is an ingredient in lighter fluid. Okay. As well as candy bars. And that rolls right off the tongue. Well, it's just like, who figures this stuff out? That's what I don't understand. Okay. They probably have to list the ingredients, right? And then someone just cross-references? Mm-hmm. Or they Google each individual. Well, that sounds scary. I'm going to search for THBQ or however those letters are supposed to go together. TBHQ. Thanks. <laughs> But who decides like, oh, we put this in lighter fluid. I bet you if we put it in a candy bar, it'll be great. <laughs> That's the part where I'm like. <laughs> it probably wasn't the exact thought process there. You might right. Thought. It's probably some preservative or something. Okay. Guess. Weird Halloween candy ingredients. Question number two. Blank is extracted from animal skin and bones and found in gummy worms. Oh, okay. I think I know this one. Gelatin, Malorian, or Sabak? Gelatin. Gelatin is correct. Sabak. I don't know. S-A-B-B-A-C? Sure. Yeah. See, never heard of that or Malorium or TBHQ. We're learning about all kinds of things that we don't know much more than that they just have weird names. Right. Okay. So, third question. Weird. Weird Halloween candy ingredients. Blank, which is a bug secretion, is used to coat jelly beans. Gelatin. Shellac. Or raw malak. Raw malak. Raw malak is wrong. Shellac, which is what I get on my nails when I get my manicures and pedicures. Shellac, so it doesn't chip. And it tastes great when you chew your fingernails. Apparently, it Mm. makes your jelly beans nice and coated as well. (laughs) Hardens them up, maybe, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay, final question. Blank, which is known as sheep sweat. Yum. Mm-hmm. Is found in most gums. Getting thirsty. Sheeplin, lanolin, or keletin? Keletin? The answer is lanolin. Man. Sheep sweat. Put that in my bubble gum. I'm going to need to go to remedial candy school or something. I mean. Quite a fail. I don't know what any of these things are, Matt. Oh. Keletin, it sounds like. It could be real, or it could be something they made up. Well, you know, I was supposed to see Keleton at the Granada during pandemic, but their tour is canceled when their drummer died. Yep. Womp womp. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. 